Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. Welcome back to our next and example of an MDMT problem found in Division 1 in the PTB4 manual. This is example uh, E3.2. Uh, it's called the use of MDMT exemption curves with stress reduction. So we look at the primary at the coincident ratio, which we talked about in earlier episodes. I'm going to do an example problem with some commentary. And it's all based upon the, the standard um, ask me example. This example, the second example, is a kind is a buildup of the previous example. It uses the same vessel, except that there's more information provided. Um, just like last time, it's a you know co-design division two. Oh, sorry, excuse me, division one. It's a post 99 vessel. Uh, materials, the component is cylindrical, the wall thickness, the corrosion allows category type. All this is exactly the same as the previous example. And the, the new elements are basically shown in the in below in the orange. And, and basically, um, to do a more in-depth analysis, you have to know a lot more about the geometry of the components, such as the diameter and, and the conditions of the pressure and the joint efficiency and the allowable stresses. Bef with, with the previous example, you know, if you didn't need to take advantage of the stress reduction, then you've got a much simpler analysis. So that's the way uh, ASME is set up that, you know, and, and also API, they always start off with, you know, a, a very broad brush to see whether you need to continue to sharpen your pencil. So we'll continue. Just like the previous example, we, we go through all of the five exceptions to make sure that they must be met. In this case, just like last time, the material is a P1 or P, P2 material. So, you know, if it's non, you know, non-ferrous or high alloy material, then, you know, these curves don't apply, right? And so then, you know, if you've got thickness issues here, if you're very thin, you know, like a sheet, for example, then, you know, you can get an you can get an exemption because we're thicker than that. Um, we don't pass, you know, uh, UG 20F, and but we do meet the hydro test criterion, and you know the thermal shock loading. We're not, you know, looking at that kind of analysis or cyclic loading. So, you know, um, otherwise, you know, but in our design temperature, is is um, you know our MDMT is um, is very you know low as well like in the first example we always start off with an example and basically we have a step one here and we're using the ucs 66 curve in note four so this when we follow note four of course then we find we look for the material it's applicable and in this case it's SA 516 grade 7 which is a normalized very tough plate and it falls under category D so there we go so that's where we all start the next step that we follow is we look at the governing thickness of the part figuring out what the thickness is so we can apply it to the USCS curve. And of course, we go through a series of figures. And, um, and in this case, we have a shell connecting to a head. And by the rules, we, we take, you know, this, this part or this part or this one. And so we end up taking this, this weld here, which is the, uh, the thickness of 46 millimeters. In step three, we're going to look at the required MDMT, which is given to us in the example. That's what we need. 
And from the vessel information we were given, uh, the, which was the arbitrary MDMT, it's minus 29 degrees centigrade or minus 20, which is a very common um, MDMT requirement for non-impacted carbon steel vessels. We go to st step number four, back to the exemption curve. As remembering last time, we were looking, we were over here and we established uh, the curve D and from figure UCS 66 and uh, the required the MDMT that um, we get is minus 21.7 and um, it's warmer than the required MDMT of you know minus 29 so well, we have some more work to do so uh, therefore, impact testing is required. So let's just take a look at this. So we go to the, the stress reduction ratio. It's also called um, a number of other things. We call it coincident ratio in, uh, by others. So let's look at why this happened. Well, we had, you know, a, a equivalent thickness, as we call, of 46 millimeters. We go up vertically. We cross the red line, which is, you know, over here the red line, and then we go across, and then that's how we get our degrees uh, in centigrade, which, which, which corresponds to minus 21.7 to be close as possible. Now, as you recall, you, uh, if you want to use computer models or you want to use the table, there's also tables as well, but the old, the, the charts are good for presentation purposes, but you know, for in terms of getting your accuracy, uh, you know, we'd recommend you use the, um, the the tables provided by ASME as well. Step five: stress reduction ratio. Use the figure you see as 66, uh, part two. Basically, we have our our require our ratio of our on the top is considered to be, you know, the stress that um, is available, like the, the if the part is very low stressed, then the ratio gets smaller and you get more credit. So again, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, t, the T required, and then over top is the nominal thickness minus the corrosion allowance. So the, the lower the ratio, the more credit that you can get because you're not, uh, the part is less stressed. So let's let's do some more detailed calculations for this pressure vessel um, to determine, you know, our stress ratio. So we're going to look at the longitudinal stresses in a cylindrical cell shell, and there's a standard standard equations that are used in back of of ASME Section 8 Division 1, and we always start off with thin wall uh, stress theory just because it's the simplest of of the group. And just to check for that is we use, if the pressure is less than this formula, 0.385 times the allowable stress times the efficiency, then uh, you can use this, the thin wall uh, stress theory equation. The other one is thick wall, which is like a triaxial stress, which is will be another video. So we have confirmed that. So we can use this ratio, which is the pressure over the, you know, the corroded radius, right? And, you know, uh, if you need to, you can take the mill tolerance into account as well. And you have your, your allowable stress times your, you know, joint efficiency. You take a little bit off of that for, uh, for a pressure adjustment. And, and basically that, um, that's a simplified equation from a very, um, a long one. And, uh, because it takes into account, you know, the radiuses of the circle, and and then you got your pressure and then your allowable stress at your MDMT and in your joint efficiency, right? So they the rules of ASME uh, for pressure ratios, they never allow you to go below 0.8. OK, so um, in this case, we have a joint efficiency of one because, you know, there was RT, it was a butt weld and so on. So um, it's one. And so when we take the ratio, we get 
some credits, like point, point 0.8. Uh, it's a bit. It's not going to be below point 0.35. With point 0.35, you get a lot of credit. But but in, but you're, we're so close. Like we're uh, you know minus 21, and we need to get to minus 29, right? So this is a, a good strategy to use is to take take advantage of the unused stress in your part. So that now we have our step six, our stress reduction. We're using going back to figure UCS 66 one, and you know we get a a, a point eight factor, which is great. So we're somewhere up here, and then we go down, and then we get eleven degrees, and that's as simple as that. There's a tabular form, of course, as well, and you can program that or do interpolation and get the most accurate answer. So we get a credit of 11 degrees centigrade and recall we sh this should work. Get our MDMT again. This is the adjustment for temperature, the final step. So we took our MDMT at step three and we, 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 take, we, we take advantage of the credit for the temperature reduction. And then behold, we're down to minus 32 degrees. Yes, we're in. So we can use this strategy to uh, avoid impact testing and save some, some money on, on, the, um, on the production of, of this, like the fabrication of this uh, pressure vessel. One, you can also take advantage of the post-weld heat treatment to reduce this, uh, take credit for it to reduce your MDMT. As you recall, when you, in the previous one, we had a coincident ratio, a stress ratio, basically, and we took credit for the fact that the part was less stress. Now, if you post-weld heat treat a part, you basically remove the residual stresses in the, in the welds and in the joints. And then by doing so, you, uh, you do the same thing as a stress reduction. Now, as, as me says, non-mandatory post-weld heat treatment uh, per UCS 68C, and um, it's only for non-mandatory. So if it's required by code because of thickness, for example, then you can't take advantage of this. But if you have, you know, half an inch part, then, uh, and you post well heat treat, this is a strategy to get yourself another 17 degrees centigrade reduction in credit. And it depends on where you're on the graph. You can get it down to, you know, minus 55 or, or all the way down to, you know, minus 155, depending on how much um, you have. So um, this is this is a very commonly used strategy. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now. Mm -hmm.